Welcome to The Next List. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. I want to introduce you to a remarkable woman who defies definition. I want you to meet Neri Oxman. Neri is an architect, an engineer, a designer, a scientist. Neri Oxman believes that we could one day in the near future 3D print our buildings. I don't want to design a building as I have learned. Uh, I want to question what it means to design a building. At her lab at MIT's Media Lab, she's experimenting with different printable materials, everything from concrete to silk. That concrete can be many things. That concrete can become a transparent window. Neri is thinking about architecture and design in completely new ways. Her muse is nature and her medium is the 3D printer. Can you print DNA? Can you print with calcium? Can you make a building with calcium? I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and this is The Next List. We're now at the MIT Media Lab. The Mediated Matter Group is the group that I have founded when I arrived at the Media Lab as faculty. Neri came as a student um, in computation at the secondary master's level. Uh, we don't tend to hire our own, uh, you know, it's just a principle. But Neri was uh, so exceptional that when we had a big search for a position in the Media Lab, she came out on top, you know, clearly, clearly excellent. The Mediated Matter Research Group was founded two years ago uh, as a design lab that's dedicated to exploring design that is inspired by the biological world and the natural world. How can we reinterpret 3D printing that generates or suggests a new design language that's informed by the environment. When you think about other systems in nature, one often thinks of the spider web. Uh, so the spiders are creatures of the environment that generate silk. And uh, with that silk, they do lots of things. Uh, they create trailing routes, they capture their prey, they wrap their prey, um, they wrap their eggs. So they generate silk for various functions. So in a way, the spider is a kind of multi-material 3D printer. The spider itself is a kind of printing machine, only instead of printing plastics, it prints with silk. So the spider web is a form of architecture, but it is also a form of fabrication. And one cannot separate the spider web's form from the way in which it originated. Nature doesn't divide between the architect, the engineer, and the construction worker. These are processes that we're fascinated to explore. Learning from nature is not new, but you can learn from uh, what she sees in the growth of a tree, for example, or in the, 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 you know, the structure, the bone structure of an animal and so on, and then take that into, you know, kind of morph it into a set of designs. The bark of certain trees in a northern climate might be made by nature to maximize the absorption of the sun. If you can understand that particular behavior and reproduce it, you might do a facade treatment for buildings in northern climates that maximizes the absorption of the sun. So in a way she was trying to create a catalog of natural behaviors that could be reproduced to then be applied in many different industries. If we're able to extract some of these ideas and principles into the design of the artificial, for instance, in the design of printing concrete columns or concrete walls or concrete building parts, then we've contributed not only to architectural construction, but also to a different way of thinking about how material distributes itself over space, but also over time. The traditions of building construction in many ways are very old fashioned. In many ways, we haven't really caught up in the same way that other technologies. So we will have um, opportunities in the future where the way in which we design and the way in which we make things uh, will probably be quite different than how we do them now. We have a robotic arm in the lab. The, the robotic arm, yes, the robotic arm can spit foam or concrete. And here I ask, how can we use the robotic arm to print with silk to achieve weaving? So this is an industrial robotic arm and we repurposed it as a, a research arm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so typically arms like this are found in assembly lines working uh, to make cars and electronics. As part of exploring the repurposing of this robotic arm as a 3D printer, we've been exploring what it means to work or print with concrete, but we've also been exploring foam. In this case, uh, this is a project led by Stephen Keating, uh, a research graduate. 3D printing is when you make an object in layers. So if you take your tube of toothpaste at home, you squeeze out the toothpaste in one layer, you squeeze out another layer of toothpaste on that same layer, you've now 3D printed something out of toothpaste. Steve was interested in a concept that he calls print-in-place construction. Here we have it printing with a urethane foam. Uh, so when we turn it on here, um, it's going to follow a, a tool path that we've dictated and spray this foam to make a mold for a concrete structure that we're working on. We've got our, our spray head here, which actually prints the foam, and then we also have a milling bit on the same effector. So after we've printed with the foam, we can switch to the milling head and subtractively carve away things that we don't want. So basically with this system, we're hoping to be able to 3D print buildings with whatever geometry we want. So imagine a Dr. Seuss looking curved house would cost the same amount as a rectilinear box shaped house. The way that Neri has used the 3D printer proposes or brings about the possibility of a different way of making things. Can we also think about buildings that would be made through a process of 3D printing, that there would be machines that will make our houses, that will make our cities? I think and I believe that in the future, in the near future, we will be using uh, 3D printing to print buildings, to print houses. And once you can print with concrete, uh, eventually you'd be able to print, you know, with titanium and other composite materials. And that would, of course, be a dream. Up next, Neri, the world-renowned artist.